Another thing you can do very easily with Azure Mobile Services is send push notifications. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to send push notifications to your Google Android device. If you don't have a device, you can set up a virtual device in the AVD Manager. You can create a new virtual device or edit an existing one. And what you want to make sure is the target set to Google APIs. If you don't see Google APIs, you want to go into your SDK Manager and make sure you've installed the necessary packages and components. You'll see in the Android folder, there's Google APIs listed. You can check the box to add those packages to install. And also scroll right down to the bottom. In the Extras folder, you'll see the Google Play Services. Install those packages and you should see Google APIs. The next thing to set up is a Google project. Go to console.developers.google.com and create a project. Give your project a name and create it. You may have to refresh the page to see your project. Select it and go into APIs and Auth. And do a search on the page for messaging. You should find Google Cloud Messaging for Android. If you want to enable this, turn it on. And once that's enabled, you can edit your credentials. And you'll want to create a new key for public API access. Create a new server key. And that's going to generate a key that we can use in our Azure portal. So copy the API key and jump across into Azure. And in the mobile service, go into the push section and you'll find the Google Cloud Messaging settings and you can paste the API key in there and save it. Now there's one more thing to do before we can touch any code and we need to get the libraries that are necessary for push notifications to work. And to do this, the first one I need to get is the mobile services SDK for Android. So I need to download that. And once that's downloaded, you can go ahead and extract the files. And you'll want to open up the notifications folder and copy the notifications jar file into your project libs folder. The next one is found in your Android SDK folder. Then extras, Google, Google Play Services, lib project, Google Play Services lib, libs, and Google Play Services jar. You want to copy that file into your project libs folder as well. Now if we go over to our project, I can see that those libraries have been added in. I'll also have to update my Android manifest to enable push notifications. And I have a snippet for all the permissions here that I'm going to paste in now. And I'm going to have to get my manifest package name and paste that in where necessary. And there's one more snippet for the receiver that needs to go in, and it goes just before the application tag closes. So just paste that in there. And you'll notice there's a line of red text. So our notifications library, although it's in the project, it hasn't been synced up yet with Gradle. So I'm going to fix that issue now. And the file you need to edit is called build.gradle, and you'll find that over in your project directories. So go and edit that file, and you'll see that there's a list of dependencies, and you want to add in the following line 
And what this is going to do is compile every jar file in your lib folder. And don't forget to sync now. So Gradle is going to sync up my project. And that should mean that that red tag should now become green. So I can go back to my manifest and check that out, make sure it's working. And there you go, fixed. Now there's one final thing I need to do and that's change the category to my package name. So I need to update that as well. So scroll up to the top and copy again the manifest package name and paste that in. And save the manifest and that's that bit done. Next, I just have to add two lines of code to my to-do activity to handle notifications. The first one I'm going to add is a constant to hold my Google project ID. So I'm going to create a static string called project ID and I'm going to grab this from my Google project. Go to overview and copy the project number. Jump back to Android Studio and paste that in to the project ID. Next, under the authenticate or where I've called the authenticate method, I'm going to add a notifications manager handler. So notifications manager handle notifications, I'm going to pass this as the activity and the project ID. And I'm going to use my push notifications handler as the way to handle the push notifications. It's in red at the minute, so I'm going to have to create this class. My push notifications handler, create. And I'm going to create another class called channel. So I'm going to use my channel class as a model for my table. And I'm going to use a snippet here, which is going to contain a couple of properties. One for the handle to my device and user, and another for the mandatory ID column, both with getters and setters. And in our push notifications handler, I've got a snippet for this, so uh, that's just paste in. And this is going to extend the notification handler. And you'll notice that a lot of the text is in red and it hasn't imported all my libraries. So I'm going to show you how to fix that in Android Studio. If you look up on ambiguous, you should find the auto import section. And if you add unambiguous imports in the fly and apply that, it should automatically grab all the imports that you need for you. So you see a whole ton of red just disappear. You'll notice there's one more piece of red and it's called get client. So I need to go back to my activity and sort that out. What I'm going to do is add a, make this static and I'm going to add a getter so I can get my mobile service client. So this is going to return my mobile service client. And now if I go back to my push notification handler, that should now be working fine. Next, I want to add in a channel table to reflect our channel model that we've created. So I'm going to create a new channel table. And this is going to store a unique handle to a user and device registered for push notifications. So at the minute it contains no records and our columns are just the defaults with the compulsory ID column. Now I'm going to edit the script for the to-do item table. And I'm going to modify the insert operation script. I'm going to comment out the line request.execute. And I'm going to paste in a snippet. And what the snippet's going to do is it's going to push a notification every time I insert a to-do item. So when I request to execute, it's going to do a callback and it's going to send that notification using the to-do item text. And I'm going to get the channel table. 
and for every channel I'm going to send a push notification using Google Cloud Messenger and I'm going to send the item text as the push notification. So go ahead and save that. And the next script, I'm going to go back to the channel table and modify the insert operation here as well. So I'm going to comment out the request execute line again, and I'm going to paste in another snippet. And what this is going to do is make sure that we don't get any duplicate channels. So I'm going to get the channel table. I'm going to run a where query on that. And if it's not found, it's going to add it in. But if it is found, it's going to ignore that so we don't get another copy. So go ahead and save that as well. Great, so that's all the hard bits done. Now all that remains is to build and run our application. So I'm going to speed the emulator boot up process again. My app has now started up and it's going to sign me in automatically using Twitter. It's also registered my user and device in my channel table and I'm going to refresh that and show you that and I can see that I've been given a handle and this is a unique ID based on my user ID and device and it's going to use that to send me a push notification so I'm going to test that now by adding a new to do item and boom I've got my push notification and it's used my to do item text to notify me and I can view the log of that push notification and I can even drill in and view more details and I can get see that it's been successful and I can see the results of the message and that completes our Android cloud app tutorial you can certainly take it to the next level and develop your app for iOS and Windows Phone and Windows Store, HTML, JavaScript, and use the same Azure mobile service for each one.